Hey man, hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. I am your host, Brian, and I am a certified men's coach that assists men who are just neck deep in the suffering of their life. The men who are just going through their, either a divorce or just going through some day-to-day -day struggles. I am here to see what I can do to help you out, help men get to the root of their suffering, help them step back, relax, so that they can actually enjoy life. Each week we look at what it takes to change how you look at life so that you are better, stronger, and more successful on the other side without having to play the victim. And this week we are talking about how to properly feed your soul. And this is something that's important because we struggle, we all struggle with being able to provide for ourselves. We provide for our family, our bosses, we provide for everybody around us in our own community. But so many times we do not take care of ourselves and we need to be able to feed our soul. And so what does it mean to feed your soul? What does it mean to, and, and what does that actually entail? What, what, what are we doing to actually properly feed our soul? And that's what we're going to be talking about. But before we get started in that, I'd like to say hello, welcome to all the new folks. We're still growing, still getting new people in. Still, <laughs> you can tell we're in summer. People don't listen to podcasts quite as much during the summer, apparently, because they're all dry, out driving, enjoying the, uh, uh, the weather and all that good stuff. And what happens is, you know, you start trying to listen to a podcast and you get the wife or... The kids complaining about, you know, oh, let's listen to music instead. So, yeah, yeah okay, our numbers our, our numbers this uh, month are still uh, down a little further than what I'd like for them to be. But at the same time, dude, it's okay. It's cool. We're growing still. We're still up and to the right. We just have a little, we have a roller coaster ride in the process. So, guys, thank you all very much for listening. If you find that you like this show and you enjoy it, always uh, go over to your podcast app of choice and hit the follow, subscribe button, and we'll be delivered to your to your inbox, or not to your inbox, to your to your app once, uh, once a week uh, on Thursdays, like this one here is. So anyhow, let's go ahead and let's get ourselves started because I'm just in here rambling at the moment. So how do you properly feed your soul? First is knowing what it is that you're, what you're doing when you're feeding your soul. So to get the, you want to make sure that you're getting the proper diet for your soul. Because remember, we're all pretty much garbage in, garbage out type of people. So if we're putting a whole bunch of, you know, crap and stuff into our, into our soul, we're going to be very crappy. So if you're running around trying to, you know, you're trolling other people, you're making, making trouble, well, your soul is not going to be nearly as healthy as if you were doing something that was actually good for it. We have, as anything else, we have to be able to consciously and intentionally be taking care of our soul. What we take into our body, what we take into our soul. What what are you reading? What are you? Who are you talking to? All you know. What are you doing for yourself? What are you doing for others? These are all different parts of taking care of yourself. How are you helping? yourself are you actually taking the time in a week to stop a step back and do something that you enjoy maybe it's going out fishing maybe you have a hobby of where you like to build you know ships in a bottle or you like to just do you know like model airplanes or model ships or model cars and, and you like to maybe even like to take the model cars and you you customize them you you actually modify them to where they look like, like funny cars or other things like that i had a friend back whenever i was in uh, high school that's something that he loved to do he would take just a regular kit you know model kit and he would go off and he would sit there and he would chop the roof and he would lower it and i mean he did all this other stuff and it was just mind-blowing to me that this is stuff you could actually do with a model and it's like wow I, I, how do you do that and he, 
He tried to show me, but at the same time, it's like going, dude, that's way too much more detail than I care to mess with on it. On it. I'll, I'll just glue doors on and, and everything together and just call it good. <laughs> so... <laughs> But when it comes to your habits and your and your the health of your soul, you the main point is to you want to make sure you take care of yourself, like setting boundaries. I want the 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 blog post this last week, what or this week was actually about the power of saying no and why saying no is actually such a powerful thing for you because it sets up a boundary instead of letting your boss or your family or whoever to just crowd in and and control what you're doing with your life you get to choose how you live your life what terms are you willing to live your life by and that is a way of making sure that you are bring allowing only the healthy stuff in if you're a vegan and I'm, granted, I'm not one, but you know, if you were a vegan, this is the only good, best this, uh, uh, similarity I could come up with is if you're a vegan, you would pay attention to what you're what you're eating. If you you're not going to eat any type of meat or any type of anything that comes from a living animal, you're going to avoid all of that with like the plague all right you're not going to go off and eat jello because it, you it's the gelatin itself is made from material uh, in animal bones and so you're really paying attention you're not going to just eat whatever you want and sit there and go well i'm a vegan while well, noshing on a hamburger right your soul's health also is contingent upon who you are talking to. If you're talking, to, if you've got a whole bunch of friends who are nothing but a bunch of negative Nancy's, you're not going to be the best, most, you know, positive person in the world. If you've got people who are just standing around, always complaining, maybe at work, you you hear a bunch of guys talking about how awful the boss is, you're going to have trouble not joining in with that group. It's kind of the same way as, I think I've used the, the example before of, of, well, show me your friends, I'll show you your future, or you're the, the average of the five people you spend the most time with. That is, who are you talking to? If you're talking to somebody who is always looking at the brighter side of things, if you're talking to people who see don't see a limitation in front of them, they just see opportunity, your soul is going to respond to that a lot more than if somebody if you say, I think I'm gonna go to uh, to the movies tonight, and you're gonna go, and everybody else is around, you're just going, well, I don't know why you want to do that. And there's nothing but crap movies on these days. Everything's all all no good and blah blah blah. You're not going to want to one. You're not going to want to hang out with them if you're really trying to build your soul up. Your soul will pull you away from people who are opposite of who you are, unless you keep forcing yourself into that situation. If you've got friends who are always trying to tear other people down and you refuse to distance yourself from that, you're going to you're going to become like them every single time. So you want to make sure you understand and pay start building up that well your your band of brothers. Make sure that band of brothers is a positive, noble group of men. These guys are also driven. They're wanting to try to get their businesses going. Maybe they do have a business and they're trying to grow the business and they've draw, decided to pull you along. Great, awesome. You get to do that and you get to learn from them. You get to learn all the great things that happen when you are in a positive situation like that. And also when it comes to people you're talking to, how often are you talking to them? Is it once every four months or is it once a day to once a week. Big difference there and you want to make sure. Are you hanging, 
you can hang around, you know, a bunch of negative Nancys once every four months and still pretty much be okay. But if you're hanging out with them every single day, you're going to get wore down a lot more. A good example of this is if you were new to a neighborhood. Say you were a kid, you're new to the neighborhood, you were and you were going around, you met some guys and they were all kind of hanging out and stuff. And they just like, hey, what's going on? Not much. And you all develop a, a tentative relationship with each other. Well, they pull up to your house one day and go, hey, come with us. And so you, all right, cool. I don't have anything to do. You crawl, you jump in the back seat and you take off. You then are taken to, say they stop in front of a, uh, of a of a liquor store they walk in and a short few short moments out they come walking a little faster out climb in the car and take off N- didn't really think anything of it but then you know that happens two three times and you you know you decide yeah i want to go ahead and get get something to drink too so you go in with them and while you're in there you see your the guys you're hanging out with, they walk over to uh, to whatever type of alcohol they like, and they grab a bottle and stick it under their arm, and very quickly walk back out. You know they just stole, and you don't say anything because they're you know well they're they're kind of your friends, and you're you don't want to cause or trouble or anything like that so you hold off and you take you, you go ahead walk oh, go over to the counter you pay for your 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 bottle and out to the car you go and they ask you well why didn't you just take it I'm like, well because you don't steal oh everybody steals blah, 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 blah. and they, they carry on a couple days later you know same thing happens Again, you're, oh, all right, but it's not as strong of a oh, type of reaction. Eventually, you're joining in with them. You're taking alcohol, you're sticking it under your coat, and you're scurrying out. But while you're just now getting to the point where you're grabbing a, a, a bottle, sticking it under your, under your coat, and scurrying out, they're at just blatantly grabbing, you know, like a 12 pack of, of beer and running out the door or grabbing a box of, of whatever their drink of choice is and running out the door and just very blatantly, even brazenly stealing to the point that eventually you get caught and you try to figure out how did you come down and get down this, uh, this line? Well, it was because of what, type of crap you were feeding into your soul. But another thing is, what are you doing for yourself? Now you're helping yourself and that is like doing, actually the, uh, now that I'm (laughs) talking, I realize I kind of, kind of got two of those backwards. The helping yourself portion of where you take a, 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 a hobby or find something that, that brings you joy and and uh, and enlightenment and and things like that. That's what you're doing for yourself. But how are you helping yourself? What are you reading these days? What are you? How are you enriching your mind and enriching your soul? That's a very important thing to do. Also, so not only are you learning for yourself, you're also helping yourself become a better, a better person. So you're doing for yourself by growing and becoming better and helping others. And what are you doing for others? Well, hopefully you are actually helping other people also because learning is one thing, but learning and applying what you've learned to, uh, to what your, what your overall goal is, ends up helping other people. So what is it, what, whenever I'm saying feeding your soul, what are we actually talking about here? Well, feeding your soul is finding your passion. What are you doing to actually feed your soul? Your soul hungers for doing something that it was called to do. For me, 
I love coaching. I love, I'm all about coaching and helping uh, helping men who are going through a divorce, helping men going through just the thick part of their war, of their life, and just there's lots of stuff going on, and they don't know how what to do. That you know they're starting to turn to coping mechanisms like taking drinking some alcohol. It's nothing wrong with drinking alcohol, but use it as more of a end of day reflective instead of let's forget. And when you actually are for, are are taking things to just not think, to not have a a line of a line of thought, you're trying to avoid, you're resisting an emotion. You're not going to be feeding your soul. So to make sure that you actually are feeding your soul, make sure that you are actually giving it the nourishment that you want. You want to make sure that you're being as hands-on as you can with whatever your passion is, whatever your calling is. Well, I, I like to, it's a calling, it's a, your purpose. What is your purpose? And I'm not talking about the Carl Jung style of, of purpose of what are you sacrificing yourself for? Because that's completely backwards way of looking at at life and looking at what fulfills you you're doing stuff yes you're creating stuff you're you're but you're not sacrificing yourself for the sake of others the altruistic motives do not provide happiness do not provide fulfillment they provide aggravation they provide the resistance that is needed for you to burn out so what do you like to do and that's how you start feeding your soul is if you don't know what your what your calling is you don't know what your purpose is that is your purpose is to find out what your purpose is and then when you find your purpose then you start really working in on that if you do not have a purpose you do not know what your calling is that should be in the forefront of your mind got a little free time hey let's see what else I can figure out let's find something I like to do what do, what do you like to do I like to play uh, I like to play with, with um, uh, model cars all right well what is it why do cars you know plastic model cars and you putting them together what does that do for you well it gives me a chance to learn about the motor and blah about it and all that okay so why is that important and you can start ask, actually asking yourself why does this hobby that you like to do why does it like to, why is it so important to you it could be that you're like you like to help uh, you like to do uh, uh, mechanic work maybe you're a mechanic at heart and that's something that you love to do you love to be able to see how if you can get an old engine to run again that's sweet be hands-on and as long as you're keeping your interest occupied while you're doing this then keep on exploring Figure out, ask yourself questions, look into the reasons why. What is it about X, Y, and or Z that is really just gets your juices flowing? These things are the important parts of your life. These are what makes you want to get up out of bed in the morning. You go to bed at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, and you wake up at before the sun even gets up, and the first thing you want to do is, well, let's see how I can get get going I get up in the, on Saturday Saturday is my is my work day I since I'm driving a truck again I'm I come in on Saturdays over to uh, to my friend's office sit down and I commence to writing blog posts and, and podcasts and everything else and all this is being done because I like the whole field of of coaching so I try to be as hands-on with coaching as I can. I attend coach calls and I help. I've got a couple of uh, groups that I that I help coach and things like that. And I keep my interest fresh and I want to make sure that I learn more and more as I go. So what does a soul, what does a soul need? You almost look at all of this as your, say the, the food groups for soul to properly to properly feed it. Well, the soul needs purpose. 
but it also needs friends and not just friends, good friends, noble friends, but, but and those friends are very much important. That's almost like the vegetables. And the spouse is almost like the, the meat because the spouse has a little, has all more micronutrients that your body needs desperately. But your soul and you need somebody to lead. So that is your family also. And then you have, in all that, you need to start having a reason to laugh and a reason to just flat out try. Want to know what your why is and follow that why because when you do not have that why that's when you open yourself up for stagnation and when you become stagnant it's like a stagnant pond man if you start you, water's not flowing it gets really smelly and stinky and very unhealthy and i want you to be as healthy as possible i want you to be driven to go out and do what it is you love to do Maybe you love to collect magazines. Maybe there is something in ma magazine collecting that you have the have a calling to do, and it, you can take that. And it don't necessarily need to take a calling and turn it into a business. But so many times our passion is so great that it has no other way to grow than to become a business. Because when you are doing something that you truly love and you are truly passionate about, you have a light among you, within you. And that light glows, it attracts those people around you. First, friends and family, they kind of look at it and come around and ask them, what in the world is this you do all the time? And that continues to expand and all of a sudden you have more people around you and all of a sudden they're wanting to give you money to have a sampling of your light. So get out there, try stuff, learn stuff, grow from it because it all does wonders for you. And if you're struggling with it, that's fine. You, you're not going to find your purpose tomorrow. Well, you may, but most of us don't. I've been, I've been searching and it didn't find my purpose until I was 45. And I've been able to do it for the past five years now. So yes, I am a 50 year old dude now. And it's taken me this long to find. Now, was I actively looking all that time? No, no. And there's going to be times where you're going to have other stuff in front of you that warrants your attention a lot more than people who are, than, than other times. There are going to be people who are coming at you and, and wanting to, to uh, distract And your uncle tried and tried and tried. And he came home broke. So why would he want to see you go through that same type of process? go through that same type of anguish, that same frustration that he was going through before. You see, we all are acting upon this line of thoughts and experiences that we've had. So yeah, is your, is your uncle wrong that, you know, you're possibly going to starve to death and you're not going to make any money? No, he did. He didn't make any money off of it. He came back, came home and started up and started working at the furniture store and buried his dream. Yet, you also have the chance. And if you do become popular and you do become successful with it, then guess what? He's going to wind up being angry at you because you were able to accomplish what he wasn't. We all have our our thoughts and we're going to hold off and deny our souls food from time to time just because of a thought we it's not worth it it's not you know there's we don't have the the courage to step out and do what it is that we want to do so this is a common issue this is why so many of us men don't have the the power to find our happiness because we deny ourselves the ability to chase our dream. We deny ourselves the opportunity to find fulfillment and enrich our lives because we hear everybody who has tried and has failed at something and they actually failed because they gave up and they, one, don't want other people to 
do something that they weren't able to do, but they also care about their loved ones. So feeding your soul gives you the power. And that's one reason why you want to have men in the in your corner who are willing to watch and cheer you on as you continue to feed your soul and you see your soul growing and developing and blooming and just becoming this awesome being. If you can do that, you're going to find your reason to try. And I hope you do. I hope you become successful at everything you do. I want you to try and try again and be okay with those failures because those failures aren't that you're a loser. Those failures are just because you learned a way to, for something to not work. So can you go on? Can you feed your soul? If you want help feeding your soul, let me know. Because the next step in all of this is reaching out touching base, saying, hey man, how can I feed my soul? And let me tell you that one of the best ways that you can feed your soul is to take the next step and get coached. You can do it the other long, hard way, but it is going to be longer. You may, it may end up taking you 10 years before you can find out what it might take you only a year in coaching because we're not going to fall into, we're not going to let you fall into the trap of, well, I'll work on this more later. No, we're going to sit there. The coaches will sit there and lean on you going, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. What failed? Why did it fail? All right, we now know, let's go. You can become great. You can properly feed your soul with the help of a coach. So if you'd like, go to relaxmail.com forward slash coaching or follow the link in the show notes and we will and I will help you see what it takes to actually become a great man. And help you become the, the father that your children want. Help you become the friend that your the men in your community need you to be. So guys, with that, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to listen. If you heard anything in here that just rang a bell, you needed it resonated with you in, on a deep, deep place, then share this out. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, threads. Share it with everywhere that you, you can think of. Let other guys know, hey, there is a show out there called Relax Mail, and man, this guy is helping change men's lives. Let them know. Tell them why. Share it. Uh, share it as a uh, as a uh, just as a text message. Most of the places you can hit the share button, and in there is text messaging, and you share it out to the to one particular friend that you know could stand to hear this, and go and tell them why. Tell them exactly, man. This tells me this is speaking to me, telling me that you needed to hear this, and so I wanted to make sure you heard it. So guys, with that, thank you very much for listening. Y'all take care, and we will see y'all next week. Till then, bye.